What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all having a spectacular day. Okay, we're back in my office slash closet. If you don't know what I mean by that, go check out my IKEA wardrobe tour and I talk about how I sort of design my space in New York City. But we are back in my office for another little sit down chat because I've had a lot of requests for this video so I figured I'd go ahead and make it. Today, we're going to talk about national tours. So if you don't know what a national tour is, a national tour is a tour, a touring production of a musical or play. Um, we'll get into more detail about the specifics of that, but that's the general <laughs> lingo about what a tour is. And I'm going to go into detail of what types of tours there are, what you can expect from a tour, how to audition for a tour, all that good stuff. But before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe because it'll really support my channel. And let's go ahead. Okay, so like I said, national tour. Most of the time, I would say 80% of the time, a national tour is going to be a musical of a Broadway show that is still open on Broadway or has closed and they took it on the road. There are also plays that go on the road, but more often than not, they're musicals. Okay, so that's the first thing. What's a national tour? The second thing you have to know or be conscious about um, is there are two types of tours. There is an equity tour and there's a non-equity tour. So there's two different types of tours. Um, let's talk about non-equity tours first. So I'm just gonna give you a general idea um, about what to expect from a non-equity tour. I have done a non-equity tour. I did the non-equity tour of Elf a couple of years ago and it was the best time. So for non-equity tours, um, it used to be that they went, the, the tour would be equity and then it would be on the road for so long and then it, they would close it and send it out non-equity. Now things have changed where they're taking a hit show on Broadway and sending it out as a first national tour non-equity. Here's the thing about non-equity tours. Non-equity tours um, pay the actors a lot less money than an equity tour. Um, you don't get as much money and you're doing the same amount of work, if not more, on a non-equity tour. Um, and the thing is, the caliber of talent is really good, except for the fact that these actors do not have their equity card. So when you do a non-equity tour, there are some things to think about. Um, there's no health insurance. So uh, you will not be provided health insurance or health weeks. The second thing is you don't get a pension. Um, you, the producers do not pay into a pension for you. The third thing is, and this is really important and I don't know if a lot of people know this, if you take a non-equity tour, you do not get EMC points. So briefly, EMC points or the Equity Membership Candidate Program, that's how you become a member of Actors' Equity unless you just book an equity contract. So to become a part of the EMC program, you have to work in an equity house that is doing equity contracts as non-union, and each week you accrue a point. It used to be you needed 50 weeks to join the union, and then literally the day after I got my equity card, they changed it to 25 weeks. So you need 25 points or 25 weeks of work to be eligible to join the union, and then you pay your initiation fee, and then you are part of Actors' Equity. When you take a non-union tour, you do not get EMC points. So that's six months to a year where you're not getting health insurance, you're not getting pension, and you're not getting EMC points. Not that that's a bad thing, I'm just, I just want you to know going in when you take a non-equity tour. So that's one thing to think about. The other thing with non-equity tours um, that are separate from if it's going out first national, most of the time a non-equity tour, you are going to be doing one-nighters. Sometimes you have a split week. So a one-nighter means you do a show, you load out onto the bus, you drive all night, you go to the next place, you do a show the next night. So every night of the week, you're in a different location. That can be really hard on the body, especially if it's a dance show and you're sleeping on the bus. Oh, I can give you my tips and tricks for tour busing. But um, that it's very, it's very hard on the body. If it's going out first national, for example, I don't know if anyone's been paying attention to what's going on with Tootsie. It was equity before the pandemic and now it's going out non-equity, um, but it's considered first national tour. It's the first time it's going out on tour. So most likely it will be touring the big stops, um, DC, Chicago, LA, Atlanta, the bigger theaters, and you'll do a one week sit down. We were very lucky when I did ELF, we had 
like one or two split weeks, but most of the time uh, it was full uh, one week sit downs and it was excellent. So uh, that just depends on the tour's itinerary, which you find out after you book the show. So that's a couple of things to think about when um, auditioning or considering taking a non-union tour. So now let's talk about equity tours. So equity tours um, are tours that are equity contracts and they're within the union. Now, differently than non-union tours with equity tours you get health insurance weeks you get pension so I think the producers will put up to three percent actually it might be different on every show the producers will put a uh, pension into your 401k money into your 401k every week and most of the time you will not be doing one-nighters or split weeks sometimes there's no way to avoid a split week but most of the time they will be a week to a month long engagement in each venue which is amazing. If it is a first national equity tour, like uh, Cats was when I did it, you will you will play all the big houses. Um, Kennedy Center, Hollywood Pantages, Chicago, Atlanta, Toronto, all the all of the really big spots. So if it's a first national equity tour, those are the best ones. It's there's so much fun, long sit downs, you really feel like you're living in each place. So those are equity contracts. Um, some examples of some equity tours right now are uh, Dear Evan Hansen, Hamilton Wicked, I Know The Prom is going out, Pretty Woman is going out, Mean Girls is on the road, Frozen, and Hades Town. I think Hades Town is new and going out. Some non-equity tours that are going out and auditioning, Cats, The Infamous Hairspray, Tootsie, Waitress, and Escape to Margaritaville. So those are just some examples of tours that are going on the road. Um, the second thing I want to talk about with equity tours in particular is the type of contract. So the two that you'll see most of the time are a production contract and a CETA contract. So a production contract is, and maybe this is just me in my opinion, but the bigger shows that are either still running on Broadway or did really well on Broadway. So a production contract is the most amount of money you can make. Um, with the most amount of benefits, with the most amount of everything. Uh, examples of production contracts, Dear Evan Hansen, Hamilton, Wicked, um, I'm pretty sure, actually I don't know if Mean Girls is production. I know Frozen is production. Um, those are some examples of production contract tours. Now, and there's a lot, they're doing negotiations on this, so this video, I may have to update you in a couple of months because this may change. All the other tours, for the most part, are CETA contracts, and that stands for short engagement touring agreement and there's different tiers in that i want to say the minimum is like 900 something dollars a week um and you still you know with all the contracts you still get health you still get pension you still get that but there are rules that they can bend about um flight reimbursements or uh, uh, uh a lot of the time it's per diem so both equity and non-equity, you get a per diem each week. On the non-equity tour, the per diem is very low. The CETA tour, the per diem sort of fluctuates and it depends on the producers. So um, they, they have a lot more flexibility in a CETA tour. And the, also the other thing that's interesting about the CETA agreement, um, depending on your tier, is profit sharing. So a lot of the times they'll talk about, okay, when we recoup our initial investment, in, in musical theater terms we call that, did we recoup, did we recoup? If we recoup our initial investment, then you get a share of the profits. So your salary increases and your overage percentage increases. For example, on Cats, we uh, made overage every single week on tour. So those are different things that you don't get on a production contract. You do not get profit sharing on a production contract. You do get it on a CETA contract. So sometimes you can make more money on a CETA if it's a really big tour, like uh, Cats. Cats was a really big tour. We were on a CETA tour and we made a lot of money with overage. So those are the two types of contracts right now. Again, they're in negotiation, so that may all change. But for now, with what's going out and what you guys will be looking for and auditioning for right now, that's what we've got right now. Let's talk about length of contract. Most of the time, it'll be a six-month rider. Um, so for Cats, for example, it was a six-month rider. So you... Uh, go up to six months without leaving and then at six months you can either sign another six months and they call it either form a or form b form a you sign for six months with no out so an out means that you get f you can tell the producers in four weeks i'm gonna leave the show so form a you say i'm staying for six months with no out or form b you can say i'm staying 
open-ended until I give you my four weeks notice. So a lot of the times people will do that depending on where they want to go in, in their life or if they're going if they're going to do another show or you know just a bunch of different things. But what I did for cats is I did the six month rider and then I signed form B and I said I'm going to stay till I give you my four weeks out. On a production contract I'm not sure if they do six months to a year. Sometimes they lock you in for a year. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the Mean Girls tour tried to lock everybody in for one year before they could get an out. Also, if you have a good agent, you can try to negotiate an out, right? Everybody's contract is different. Everybody's negotiation is different. Everything on everybody's paperwork is different. So if you have a good agent and you want an out from the beginning, that's some wiggle room that you can negotiate on. But most of the time, it's six months to a year or a year contract or an extended or you can just be on it open-ended um, with a four week out. That's the general idea about the equity tours. The non-equity tours, I'm pretty sure they try to lock you in for at least a year, um, but I know some of them will do six months. My elf tour was short. It was a holiday tour, so we were locked in the entire time with no out because we were only performing for two or three months. So that was just that example of the, that show that I did. Okay, let me give you an example of what it looks like to audition slash book slash go on the road with the show. Let's talk about cats. So I auditioned for cats I don't know, January of 2018, I went to the ECC and then I had an appointment and then I had a callback and then I had another callback and then we had a week of dance camp and then I didn't hear anything for two months. Then I booked the show um, and we started rehearsals in December. We rehearsed for six weeks in December. Most of the time, it's a, if it's a first national tour that's going out for the first time, um, you will rehearse in New York City. So we rehearsed at New 42 for six weeks, put the whole show up. Then you get on a bus and you travel to a city outside of New York City. So I think we were in Buffalo, Buffalo, and you tech at a theater in Buffalo for about a week. So you don't tech in New York City. You tech with the set in another city um, and then you do some previews and then you open in that city. And once you are open, the show is frozen and then you'll go on the road. One thing to keep in mind, um, and I think this is true with Broadway shows too that nobody really talks about, um, you're rehearsing all the time. When you go on the road, it's not like the show's done. Um, you're constantly rehearsing understudies, you're constantly putting in new people or vacation swings or all that kind of stuff um, throughout the entire run. So it's not just performing the show once you open. There's a lot of maintenance work in terms of keeping the show what it is on the road. Um, and that's just something to be aware of. When I did Elf, we really didn't rehearse that much, maybe once or twice, um, because it was a short tour and uh, you know, we only had one or two put-ins for the understudies and that was it. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're doing a year or six month uh, national tour. Okay, let's talk about being a replacement. So, and this goes for Broadway too, but for national tours. So say you get an audition and they say, hey, we need an immediate replacement for the tour of Wicked. You start in a week. So you get that audition, you book the show, you have to pack up your life together. You'll fly to wherever the show is and you're going to rehearse while they're performing. So most of the time there's a studio in whatever location you're playing. You'll go downstairs, you'll learn the music, you'll meet with the dance captains or the um, associate choreographer who like tours with them uh, on the show and you'll learn it all without anybody. And then you'll have a put in rehearsal or a understudy rehearsal with the cast um, then you'll do your put in so you'll be in full costume and everybody else you'll do the full show everybody else will be around you and then you will go in that night that's the general timeline of replacing and that goes for Broadway shows as well very fast um, sometimes overwhelming but most of the time the cast is there to support and help you and will help you with anything that you need um, but that's another way to get a tour is you can replace on the road um, and you will travel to that company to start to work with them on the road. Another thing we can talk about is um, what do you bring on tour? So most of the time the producers will pay for one big suitcase and one little suitcase or two suitcases in general you can decide big or little they'll pay for up to two suitcases and then your carry-ons but also you'll get a trunk so the equity tour trunk is really big and you can fit a lot of stuff like a lot of people bring like a crock pot or shoes or a ring light or equipment or anything like that they will travel that for you on a truck the non-equity trunk that I used in because it was a short tour so I'm not sure if this is for all the non-equity tours it's smaller so you can't fit as much but I would put like a winter coat or things like seasonal things that I was going to need because we were going to be in Cali and then we were going to go to Toronto 
So um, that is another thing. It's not just your two suitcases. It's you get a trunk that the company will travel for you, which is really nice. Um, most of the time when you go out for the first time, you're going to overpack. You're going to bring things you don't need. When you come home for your layoff, you're going to unpack and you're going to pack only the things that you need. You just sort of learn what you're going to use, what you don't use, that kind of things. I just brought up something else. Let's talk about layoffs. Um, a lot of the times what will happen either during the holidays or you'll have a week here or a week there, you'll have a layoff week, which means that the company will send you home. They'll keep your trunk. You have a week off and then you'll fly and meet the company back in the next location. Um, that's pretty typical. Um, uh, you get like a week vacation. Sometimes that's pretty typical. I think we had one or two layoffs the entire time we did cats, like one week layoff twice the whole year we did cats. Um, another thing on the equity tour, I'm not sure how, how it works on non-equity because my tour was short, but on the equity tour, you get a week vacation every six months. Um, so you, you get a paid week vacation uh, and they will fly, either the, the understudy will go on for you or they'll fly a um, vacation swing to be ready to go on if the understudy has to go on for somebody else. So you get a vacation week every six months. You also get sick days on the equity tour. So I think you get 11 sick days a year. 11 sick days a year, and if you don't use your sick days, you get paid out when you leave the tour for them, which means that you get that money back. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's correct. We had 11 sick days on cats, so there's sick days on the equity tour as well. I did do a video about the best and worst things about touring. You can check out that video here if you have any questions about, like, what it's like to tour, uh, do you miss your family, all that kind of stuff is in that other video, but this is just a little bit more in-depth about what to expect, the type of contracts, um, the difference in equity versus non-equity. Um, again, you know, totally up to you guys what you want to audition for, what you want to go out for, what you want to accept. So yeah, that's just my experience and I do, I have done both. So I have experienced equity and non-equity. I actually did the Elf Tour non-equity and equity both times. So um, I got experience in both. I cherished all three of my tours, Elf Twice and Cats. Um, you learn a lot. You learn how to live with people. You learn how to take care of your body. Oh, insert here, my travel, my travel tip for if you're on the bus and truck non-equity tour and you're doing one-nighters, uh, I go to Walmart and I get the mattress topper, the skinny twin mattress topper, and I roll it up with me. You can put that in your trunk. Oh, trunks. You can put that in your trunk um, so you don't have to fly with it, but if you're on a bus, you put it out on the floor and then you sleep on the floor with a pillow and it saves your back. That is my travel hack. That is my, I do it for the equity tours too, my tour travel hack to save your back and to save your body. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's anything else you want to know or anything that I missed, please leave a comment below and I will either answer your question in the comments or I will make another video about tours. I've got a couple more videos coming out about theater related things, so be on the lookout for that. Before you go, please don't forget to subscribe because it'll really support my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.